Hey guys, we're here in one of my bigger jobs this year. And this is the only job we had to use Tamcos. Lee, why did we have to use them? To match the other 13 buildings on the property that a previous person installed. Very, very, very unfortunate. So you know I'm not making it up. You can see Tamcos Heritage are used here. But here's the result. Look at this one right here. So, they're so inconsistent. You can see here how tabs are shorter, but if you go down here, they're all passing the line. So as a roofer, if you're trying to make this roof look straight, you're gonna fail because the tabs, some shorter, some longer, right next to each other. So your line will be wavy. So yeah. that's the reason we don't use Tempcos. Hello and welcome everyone. This is Roofing Insights. I'm your host Dmitry Lipinski and today we're talking about best and worst shingles to buy in 2019. Last year and last three years I've been doing a lot of testing anything from granule loss to weight to nailing zone and I've put a lot of content out there and engaged a lot of conversations in the roofing community about who makes the best and the worst shingles out there. Today's review is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to compare them head to head. We're just going to overview what it makes to make the best shingle and what it makes to, be, uh, to make the worst shingle out there. And when I say the worst, I don't mean it in a negative way. There is a room in place for every shingle on the market. Uh, manufacturing shingles is not easy job. It's a very complicated process. I've been in many plants myself and I've seen shingles in the making. It's hard. Every time you come to the plank, you can literally see shingles that don't make it out to the field. But unfortunately, a lot of them do. And unfortunately, about 1% of all the roofs fail regardless. Even after they shipped out and being installed, roofs do fail. So the purpose of this video is to save somebody headaches, to help somebody make educated decision uh, which brand to buy if you installer and maybe it's your first year in business, please pay attention because the qu quite a few things we'll be talking about is installation process and why quality of the shingles matter a lot. So we've been getting a lot of calls, a lot of inquiries uh, because we've done this content in the past. And today I just wanted to make simpler version who makes the best and who makes second grade. Uh, because last year in my final video of 2018 uh, comparison between the shingles, I uh, pretty much come up with a first and second uh, grade classification and I put top four in the first grade and top four, uh, bottom four in the second grade. I still stand behind it, but today I wanted to explain it in a little bit different angle. So here's what we have here. We have top two shingles. I'm not gonna name any brands. I'm just gonna say that these two brands, I just, uh, this one I just picked from big box store. This one I picked up from local uh, shingle supplier here in Minneapolis. And this two uh, we picked up from another supplier and this one from another big uh, box store. While with the naked eye, they all look very similar. And I would say driving through town, looking from the ground on the roofs, you're not gonna see the difference. Um, you're not gonna see the quality difference at least. But if you are a roofer, you will know that there's a top three brands. And if you stay to the end, I'll name all of them. Top three shingles, they have most fans. Uh, they have installers who swear by them. They, uh, they get offended if somebody says it's the best shingles. And lower quality shingles, they're builder's grade shingles. They're truly second grade. Uh, a lot of builders, a lot of uh, multifamily homes, a lot of uh, wholesale companies do them because they don't care if a roof will last 20 years. They have to issue 10 year warranty. Uh, almost any shingle on the market will last at least five to seven to eight years. And usually big problems starts happening right around that time, seven, eight years. But what's really important is right off the bat is your nailing zone. Um, nail zone is important because First thing the manufacturer does when your roof fails, when they come out to inspect the roof, they look how it was installed. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of uh, shingles differentiate. 
best shingles will always have really easy to understand nailing zone that it'll be wider it'll be easier to read where lower grade shingles will have something like this you can see it like here you can't even see the line i mean if i would be installer and i need to install you know 2000 a nail 2000 to 3000 nails per roof you can see how easy it is to miss or you don't even know you don't have directions to nail the same goes here so <clears throat> Lower quality shingles have narrower zone and they're not consistent. Uh, consistency is very important because even if you have a big nailing zone, but when you put two shingles together, it doesn't line up, you still forced to go above or lower the zone. So the problem with the whole thing about the nailing zone is manufacturers do walk away from um, from those jobs, from those warranties. They simply come out and they say, nope, you high nail everything. And the reason installers high nail, just because they wanna be safe. They don't wanna face nails because face nail is where you, when you install a shingle and your shingle and your nail will be facing here. That's a no-no. So installer always wanna be safer, high nails it, misses the common bond area and as a result, what is the warranty? Well, not many people talk about it, but I personally think that one of the reasons lower quality shingles don't improve, in my opinion, because they don't want to stand behind those warranties. It's a really easy way out. Where good manufacturers, they can't argue. If you nail in this zone right here and you have a blow-offs, well, that's a wind warranty, right? You come out and manufacturers have to replace it. The same here. Manufacturers are telling you, you have to install here, boom. Uh, how can you argue with that? Another really big um, difference between good and bad shingle, it's a sealant on the back. For example, this one right here, this is actually one of the worst of this example. So definitely, you know, what makes the best and what makes the worst, right? Look at this. When sun will heat and uh, when sun will activate this line, this shingle will seal way faster and the bond will be way stronger. This one right here, I mean, you can barely, I mean, it's, it's like 30% of this. So again, on the flip side, the shingles might look very similar. You don't see the common bond, but we actually have seen, and one of the reasons we dropped one manufacturer a couple of years ago in my roofing business is because we have a warranty issue where we install a job and shingles never sealed. Manufacturer came out, looked at everything. We have six blow off shingles on the ground within first six months after install. Nothing we did wrong, but shingles would not seal. There's, uh, their line looks just like this. They didn't back up their warranty. 30 days later, they sent us uh, a letter um, saying that uh, they don't see manufacturer defects. So we took a piece of shingle, sent it to their lab. They came back not their fault. Well, if it's not your fault and it's not my fault and we have six shingles on the ground, whose fault is it? As a business owner, it's, you have to make a decision. We made a decision not to install, not to offer that brand anymore. And unfortunately they were right here. They were on the lower end. And to this day, they still stay there. Now, another pretty big aspect of the shingles, it's also weight and granule loss. Some of the manufacturers claiming that weight is not important. Unfortunately, I don't have to uh, fight or agree with it. I go uh, against specifications. So manufacturers who are not consistent with their weight always say the weight is not important. So for example, uh, some brands, I believe this is one of them, would say that their shingle should be 230 pounds per square. When we weighted them, they were not even 200, so 30 pounds per three bundles, it's a lot. It's like 10 pounds is missing. Uh, one of the reasons it's happening because uh, asphalt is expensive and just by cheating a little bit, they uh, save a lot of money. So best shingles in the market, they, they will be a little bit heavier. I'm not saying that weight is absolute parameter for a better shingle, but obviously the more asphalt, the more weight you have, the, uh, the harder it is for weather to take heat on that shingle. Uh, another parameter as well is granule loss. Making shingles is pretty complicated process. I've been quite a few plants and you talking about 
big temperatures, you're talking about a lot of components, you're talking about big lines, and you can constantly see uh, almost in any plant that there is a, a big waste. There is a whole batches that shingles were not made per that manufacturer specification. One of them is a granulose. Almost every manufacturer test their granulose at the factory because if if, if granules did not adhere good uh, after install wind and rain will wash them away um, granules in shingles are not just little rocks they actually have metals in them some of them has copper so you don't want a massive granulose around your aluminum around your maybe copper gutters for fancier homes so you want to your granules stay on your roof and you don't want to weather and wind and sun keep beating them. So best shingles usually have way better uh, granule here where uh, like even here, this two, just by dealing with them here and in my test before, you can see how much granules right off the box already missing. Well, of course, statements from those uh, worst manufacturer would be something like, oh, but we put more granules uh, in uh, on purpose during production. Well, why would you do that? It's 21st century. You're telling us you put more so you can waste more? How about um, work on your process and glue them better, improve your uh, process so we don't have to throw tons of granules in our grasses, on our roofs, and our gutters, and actually keep them on the shingle themselves. So again, if you look from the ground, it's not a big difference. But if you start touching, if you start filling shingles, difference is huge. And that's a true difference between the best and the worst. So who makes the best shingles right now? Well, if you ask me personally, and I might be biased, but I've been doing it for years. I, I believe that uh, Certainty probably has the most fans in the country. Certainty Atlas, Owings, Corning, those top three brands are for me. On, on the lower end side, it's going to be IKO, it's going to be Temco, it's going to be BP, and some other brands. Here's the big, biggest difference of all. Top three brands, the best shingles out there, Certitude, A Atlas, and Owings, Corning are going to have the most followers, the most installers who swear by them. Uh, like, for example, last year, my company installed Temka, and I actually put a video about them. It was one of the worst roofs I have to install. I didn't have a choice because it was a big apartment complex, and we have to follow the uh, specifications per, per that management company. But when we were installing them, the product was so inconsistent. We hated it. My installers hated it. The reason it's happening is because it's builder, builders grade. It's a cheaper uh, product. It's not as good as others, but when you say five, ten dollars per square, it adds up. So a lot of builders are using them and there's a place for it, right? So when you buy something and it's with the builder's grade, when you buy a house and you know it's builder's grade house, your uh, door is going to be downgraded, windows not going to be the best and so on. So what? But if you buy a custom good house and builders care about everything, this is what I want to install. Again, there is a place for every shingle out there. If you're in the installing world, comment below what brand you like, why you like it. All manufacturers have class action lawsuits against them in the past, including Atlas, including Serenity, including Owen Scorning. I mean, all shingles fail. Uh, the problem is not failing. The problem is how do they um, come around it? How do they back up their warranties? And this is where real talk in the roofing community should take place because i've seen so many roofs failing and manufacturers come out and they just don't honor them where some manufacturers comes out and write you checks on the spots and apologize like yeah sorry bad badge whatever let us take care of it where some manufacturers not even allowed to sell their products in some states another one too is the process of educating installers. I told you in the beginning that if you install it, pay attention because there are some brands, like for example, IKO. I remember years ago uh, meeting IKO rep at a uh, home show and I asked him, what does it take for me to become certified installer? He said, just give me your address and you know your name and company name. And I gave him everything. Within two weeks, I was certified. He sent me certification, Dmitry Lipinski with a storm proofing and certified installer for IKO, something I put on my wall. You didn't earn it. You didn't do anything. Now, on, on a side note, the best, one of the best shingles out there, certainty, 
dude, try to get certified with them. They'll make you do the test before they give you, uh, before they make you certify. That's the difference. Like serious manufacturers, the best manufacturers, they do care about how you install it. They do care about you registering warranties with them at the end because they want to back up those warranties. Where builders grade or second grade shingles or in my mind, worst shingles to buy, they don't have none of that. You pretty much have to sign off right from the beginning that you're not getting the best, you're saving money and you're giving up stuff. A lot of people also ask how to find an installer. And my only tip about installer is, I'm not gonna tell you find an installer who installs certain teeth or OC or Atlas. My thing is make sure your installer have commitment to the brand, installers that brand understands the warranty of that brand have relationship and training program with that brand. I don't care what your installer installs. Maybe he wants to install Tamco, right? It's fine as long as he will stand behind that warranty and as long as he does it per manufacturer specification. I might install OC, somebody else might install certain teeth and somebody else might install uh, Atlas. As long as we have those relationships, we will deliver good product. Now, stay away from roofers on the other side who will come to you and say product doesn't matter any product you have will install it you want this we'll install that you want this we'll install that that just tells me they don't really care they don't stand for anything their work doesn't mean anything if if roofer cannot tell you why he likes one product and doesn't like another or if he tells you they're all the same to me it's a red red sign big red sign that he doesn't know what he's talking about because these products are not the same there's a tons of difference there's tons of difference how to install them there's tons of difference in their weight there's tons of difference in performance and the wind warranties in the paper warranties some of them will tell you in the warranty that their claims will never be more than like forty dollars per square where you paying like 350 on average probably so the thing is be careful out there not all shingles are the best the best are atlas certainty and owing scorning in my book the worst are tamco iqos bps and pepco uh, now some of them are climbing up to the first grade but they're not there yet there is a few we didn't mention for legal reasons uh, pretty much every single time somebody reaches out to us or threaten us with a legal uh, issue we decided we're not going to even talk about them you on the other side can talk about them in the comments below let us know the brands you like the brands, uh, brands you hate if you agree or disagree with my opinion here but i think i know what i'm talking about i think i have a lot of installers who will support my opinions i would like to hear from you only six percent of our viewers comes from subscribers 94%. What are you waiting for? We know who you are anyway. Subscribe below right now.